Over the last four years, our sailing journey has taken us to some of the most remote and sought after destinations in the world. In our last episode, we found ourselves in the renowned paradise of Bora Bora amidst its iconic landscapes and crystal clear waters. But now it's time for us to sail beyond the beaten path to an island you probably haven't heard of before. It's a hidden gem full of beauty and tranquility, but it's tightly guarded by one of the most dangerous passes in the South Pacific. As we sailed away from the lagoon of Bora Bora, we pointed the bow to Mapiti, about 30 miles away. The wind was directly behind us, so we set up the whisker pole for the downwind journey ahead. The conditions were absolutely ideal, but as we got further away from the lee of Bora Bora, it became extra rolly. The growing ocean swell made the motion inside the boat a bit unsettling. Thankfully, this was only a few hour sail and not a multi-day passage, so we found the rolling a bit comical. With our sails furled in, we lined up the center of the channel markers to enter Mapiti. The conditions looked pretty rough, but manageable. We had heard the limit for entering the pass was about a two meter swell, and the swell was just about at that point. With three to four knots of current against us coming out of the channel and huge breaking waves on either side of us, we focused on navigating safely through the pass. Once inside the lagoon, we motored over to find a good place to anchor. How's your pucker level? Back to the zero. What was it going to the past? Five. Five? Half pucker. Oh, what about when the electronics went out? Uh, back to a three. <laughs> Oh, it went down on the electronics. Yeah, because I couldn't see the charts or anything in the ages, so I had less to worry about. Uh, we didn't get that on film. Wow. So, what would you rate that pass? I'd rate that pass as any bigger swell and you don't want to go through there. <laughs> yeah, we kind of hit it at the max, I think. The max as far as as much swell as we want, but where we would just keep on Not going. Good. Yeah, it was fine in the middle of the pass, but the waves breaking on either side Terrifying. are like, by the time they get up, stacked up on the reef there, it's like 10, 12 foot waves smashing on the reef. We had like four, four knots of current against us, I think, at one point. 
three. Yeah, we still have three knots of current against us right now. Wow. We made it, a little puckering, but not too bad. Uh, it seems like the places that are really tough to get to are always worth it. It's beautiful here, it's quiet, there aren't many boats here. We were able to anchor in just 15 feet of water, which, I mean, aside from the mooring ball that we grabbed in Bora Bora, the anchoring's been a bit challenging everywhere because it's been so deep. Uh, we're surrounded by clear water and it looks like there's a beach up here to hang out on. So I think this will be a good, good spot for us to hang out and chill for a few days. We are here at the beach this morning. Gary wants to do some kite boarding, so he is pumping up his kite now. And I'm just taking a walk on this beach. Uh, it's actually a motu next to the island. and. It is so peaceful and so calming here, um, especially since we just left Bora Bora. Bora Bora is no doubt beautiful, um, but it's a little busy and there's resorts everywhere. So there's really not a lot of public beaches that we're able to go to because they're all private. So it's really nice just to be able to wander around and enjoy just how incredibly gorgeous it is here. Uh, we've been moving around a lot and it's nice just to be in one place for a bit. Anyway, I'm gonna help Gary launch this kite, and then I think I'm just gonna lay on this beach and read a book. Well, we mentioned before that Gary's just learning to kiteboard, so keeping an eye on him out here. Uh, he just got up, which is awesome. It takes a little while to get the kite up. Um, I'm not really good at launching it yet because I'm also just learning and uh, holding it properly for him so that it'll lift up. But it's a really perfect spot because of the sandbank here. So it's shallow and oh, just went down. Ooh, went down hard. Bummer kiting session didn't last for very long because Gary's foot bracket thing broke. So we're just gonna go for a little walk. And maybe have lunch somewhere. We found the perfect place to eat lunch under the shade of the palms, and we stared out at the scenery that surrounded us. A protected lagoon with numerous shades of turquoise and a dramatic island surrounded by flat sandy motus. Good morning. We're gonna go for a little hike today. I'm not sure how little it's gonna be. We're gonna try to hike to the top of that. All the way up there to the tippy top. You ready, sunshine? So ready. And the hiking begins right up these stairs. <laughs> you can see that this is lava rock, volcanic lava rock. Pretty cool. We're on the right path. <laughs> yeah, they can hear the singing. The music. Oh. We're almost to the top. It's a steep one and we waited until about 
10 a.m. to go do this. So it is sunny and hot. Brooks dying over there. <laughs> dying. Oh, I'm dehydrated. So we have to get up this rock next, but look at this behind me and the view from up there. I bet it's going to be really amazing. Polynesia. We say it all the time, but the places that are difficult to go to are always worth it. Yeah, you're just super incredibly lucky to be here and experience places like this. Uh, this is exactly why we sail. Right here is the pass that we came through. And the island is surrounded by all that reef. There's one line. We dinghied into town and tied up to the public dock where there was a trash bin to drop off our garbage. But as we wandered a bit further down the road, we found an eye-opening sight. This is wild. That's crazy. Decided to go for a little walk in town today, and we found the most important thing, the ice cream shop. Ooh. Let's see what we want. Wow. Taro. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good. Yeah. yeah. Two. <laughs> Two. <laughs> homemade cone and homemade ice cream. And the flavor is like a vanilla, right? It looks amazing. It's really good. It was no surprise to us to see so many boats scattered around, as the economy of the island depends heavily on fishing and pearl farming. As we made our way around the island, it became evident that the residents of Mapiti live a simple and peaceful life. Think of Mapiti, the town of Mapiti. Mapiti is extremely peaceful. There's <laughs> really not a lot that happens here, and it's kind of nice. We're enjoying it for 
it not being Tahiti or Bora Bora and being a lot more relaxed. There's only, I think, 1,600 people that live here and on the surrounding Motus, the only industry here really is tourism to the little hotels. There's no big resorts, no over the water bungalows. If you want to stay here, you either need to come by boat or you stay in basically a little bed and breakfast type place. So we just took a little walk around. There's really not much to see or do, which is really ideal. It's nice for us just to take some time and relax on the boat and, you know, just do little walks like this with no real goal in mind. But it looks like we're going to be here for the next few days because there's a big south swell coming. Uh, what is it like a four meter swell? It's a four meter swell that's predicted, which will make the pass completely impassable. So, <laughs> so we're pretty much stuck in here. We'll be here until that settles down and we'll go take a look at the pass in a couple days when it gets real gnarly and see what it looks like. But from what we've heard and what we've been told, if the swell's over two meters, it's a no-go. Yeah, you, you can't go in or out, so that's okay. We're, we're happy with it. We're happy to be here and happy to decompress for a while. But I think we're going to head back to the boat because there's some storm clouds coming. So this hermit crab right here climbed out of this shell right here and now it's going around attacking the nearby hermit crabs to get into their shells and I've never seen anything like it. I just assumed that they went to another nearby shell, an empty one, uh, but that's not the case. This little guy is aggressive and he's trying to get into other guy's shells. Have fun, be careful, want me to do something? <laughs> Hi little island dog. Hey buddy! This is such a great place to have my morning coffee. We really enjoy sailing around with our buddy boats, but it's also nice sometimes just to have, you know, peace and quiet and relaxation time. When all of our friends are around, it seems like we're going nonstop. You know, we're doing sundowners on different boats and we're doing dinners together and hikes and it's a lot of fun, but these moments are really nice too. And it's just the two of us and you can just enjoy some alone time for a bit. Love the island dogs. Hi. Gary looks like he might be having some trouble out there. So I'm gonna go check on him. This is my job is to chase him down with a dinghy. supposed to be around four meters so we figured we'd run out and see what the pass looked like and yeah it looks pretty treacherous um, so like we figured we'll be in here for a few days as we wait for the uh, swell to pass definitely not something that I want to take one life out in right now Gary's trying to get some drone shots of it uh, we ran our dinghy out pretty far but I was like no I don't want to go any further the current is just ripping out the inlet right now how does it look? It looks like it would be fun in a jet ski. A <laughs> jet ski. <laughs> Well, 
When the ocean swell is large, waves break over the reef surrounding the lagoon, forcing extra water into the inside. All this water rushes back out the single pass through the reef, creating an extremely strong outgoing current. On this day, the current was probably close to 10 knots, far too strong for a sailboat to even consider going through. The raging outflow runs hard against the incoming swells, creating a washing machine of white water and rapids. the green marker and the red one and you can see that the waves are just breaking all the way across and the waves don't look so big from this angle I'm just standing on the beach shooting but yeah nothing to mess around with Our dinghy keeps wanting to get ripped out by the current. So wild to see what a difference a few days can make on the ocean. Uh, I can't believe that we came through the same exact pass just a few days ago. But that's all part of coming to places like this. We're still just chilling here in my PT and I think I'm just gonna do like a day in the life on Anchor because we don't really do this. Um, but last night we stayed up editing until I don't even know what time we went to bed. Gary stayed up, I think, until like 3 a.m. And I finished off the video this morning and just got it posted. Uh, yeah, so now we're gonna make some breakfast and then just see where the day takes us. But this is our editing setup here. So we have the laptops. The editor. The editor, <laughs> the chief editor. Just need some coffee and I'm gonna get to making breakfast. So the first order of business is to see what kind of fruits and veggies we have that needs to be eaten for the day. Uh, and I think this avocado is ready. So we're gonna get this out and we still have eggs. So I'm thinking maybe some breakfast burritos. What do you think about that, Gary? Do it. So why I'm at it with these eggs, to keep them fresh. Um, so first off we buy unrefrigerated eggs, but then I rotate them every other day. And that supposedly is to keep them from rotting. And uh, we've had pretty good luck doing this. So I'm just gonna continue to rotate these eggs. <laughs> and I just dropped an egg on the floor. Yeah. Shit. Ah! <laughs> what a mess. So this is a real bummer for a couple of reasons. First one is eggs are really expensive here. Um, I think it's, I don't remember what we paid for the last dozen of eggs, like $10, $13. And also there's nowhere else to get eggs for a while. <laughs> so they're pretty precious. story you know that our water maker is giving us problems so we're gonna collect this rainwater. Gary just went outside he's gonna build a dam around the, the where our water intake is on the deck and hopefully it rains enough to uh, top off our tanks today that'd be fantastic. So I read this blog post the other day um, that this couple 
wrote they sail um, on a ML. And she basically said that, you know, there's all these YouTube channels out there and they're just like over dramatizing how great this life is. Um, and Gary and I really try to do a good job of showing you the reality out here. And I don't think that's true. I mean, we follow a lot of YouTube channels. A lot of them are our really good friends. Um, and we all just show what it's really like, but they say we only show the good stuff. So we're going to make sure to show you guys a little bit of the raw sailing life as well. We showed like five months of us grinding fiberglass. So I don't know. That's the reality of it too. Yeah. I mean, I guess like the reality of it is, is yeah, we go to some really amazing places and we do some really spectacular things, but we work our asses off to get to these places. And sometimes it's cloudy and it rains all day, just like this. And that's not the drone footage that you're going to see though. Yeah. So here we are, real life. We just realized that there was water in our dinghy. We forgot to pull the plug when we hoisted it. Scary's gonna run around and drain it. Woo! Deck slippery. <laughs> it's a crummy day here in paradise. We have those days. Yeah, I'm really thankful for the rain though because both of our tanks are full. So that's pretty amazing. The rest of the day we spent on our laptops, editing, watching Netflix and YouTube, and doing pretty much all the typical things you would do in a house on a rainy day. Guess we're gonna skip looking at the path today, huh? Yeah, it's really rainy today, so. The swell's supposed to be settling down, so we'll run out there first thing in the morning and check out the conditions at the pass. And if it looks okay, maybe we'll leave tomorrow afternoon. I'm just taking a look at the weather today, but we'll look at it in more detail tomorrow and figure out what our game plan is, because we're still not exactly sure where we're sailing to from here. We are heading to check out the pass this morning. We might have a window to get out of here. So the swell today is supposed to be around two meters and they say that two meters and under, um, it's safe to get out of here. So we're gonna dinghy over and see what it's like out there. Let's go back and, and talk about it. I think it's best to be aside while you're here. Okay. If right now it's no go, we can come back this afternoon and check it again. Two o'clock or something like that. See what the weather is like today it is not pleasant there's a pretty good haze and fog over the whole island and it's drizzling rain like it has been for the last three days straight it kind of starts to affect your mood a little bit but we took the dinghy over to check the pass and it's a no-go for this morning there's still pretty big standing waves and swell breaking halfway across the pass when it gets pretty big so we're gonna wait probably another day and go check it again in the morning and see, but for now we are stuck in here. It's not that I don't think that we would make it out the pass, it's that the the consequence for, for failure is enormous, right? If you have one failure, whether it's steering or the engine or just a bad decision in terms of navigating, just one thing means the boats on the reef and getting bashed to little pieces and it's game over so you know i'm usually a pretty big risk taker when the consequence is small but in this case it's just it's not worth the risk of trying to get out to get one more day so we'll just spend another day in here it's beautiful the anchorage is super flat and calm so it's really not a bad spot to hang out and 
maybe if the wind stays up like this and it stops drizzling rain, maybe I'll get another little kiteboard session in. Make the most of it while we're stuck here in paradise. Day four of checking the pass? Day three of checking the pass? I don't even know. I don't know, the winds have shifted out of the north, so hopefully it's not wind against current and the pass looks a little better this morning, but we're gonna go out and check it and if it looks passable, then today we're gonna leave. Yeah. Hopefully my anxiety isn't as high today as it was yesterday. I just, I didn't have a good feeling about it. And Gary and I have a rule that if one of us says no or doesn't like the situation, um, we don't do it. So anyway, I feel pretty good today about it though.